So I'm going to uh, discuss one particular augmented block design example, uh, the very simplest case where we're only controlling heterogeneity in one direction. We want to, uh, the checks occur once in every block, uh, and the new entries occur just once in the expand, experiment. So this would be called an augmented randomized complete block design. And the uh, example I'm going to give is from the crop that I breed. It's called Metafoam. This is a native uh, plant that was uh, first produced as a crop in Oregon in 1980. It's, a, um, it it's uh, grown for its seed oil, uh, which has very um, novel long-chain fatty acids. It makes it uh, have exceptional oxidative stability. Presently, it's used in cosmetics. But it also has potential uses as a fuel additive, uh, as an additive in vehicle lubricants or in pharmaceutical products. And you can see on the right there that the seeds are quite small. Metafoam is a very good rotation crop in the Willamette Valley of Oregon. It's a winter annual, so its production cycle fits in very well with the weather and rainfall patterns that we have here. The plant and seed meal are high in glucosinolates. It's a member of the Brassicales, and uh, the glucosinolates are thought to have some phytosanitary properties. Another advantage is that it fits very well into the grass seed productions, which are predominant here. You can see in the picture below there the windrows that are being harvested um, of metafoam uh, using the same equipment that you would use for uh, grass seed production. There are a number of pollinators that can be used for metafoam. Commercially, the growers would rent honeybee hives. Uh, but for the breeding program, we've recently um, figured out that we have a couple different options. We could also use uh, blue orchard bees, which work very well in small isolations or in small cages. Uh, we also uh, can use blue bottle flies in the greenhouse to do uh, small recombinations or, as you see here in this picture, to self uh, large numbers of plants. The particular germplasm I was working with, this was in 2005, I had inherited um, some diverse breeding populations from a retired breeder. Uh, those populations, we regenerated the seed at the greenhouse and self a large number of plants. Um, we had, after two generations, we had S2 lines and we transplanted uh, those lines to the field and they were allowed to outcross. Uh, this is the first time that we had tried using uh, an S2 test cross system in uh, Metafoam, so I didn't have all the details worked out and we didn't have sufficient seed for replicated uh, progeny trials. Uh, our goal was essentially to form a, a broad-based uh, population for recurrent selection, so we wanted to screen the S2 test crosses and then select the best S2 parents for recombination. So uh, we did actually a couple of different um, experiments that year, but I'll talk about one of them. Uh, one of the augmented designs was um, included 50 new um, S2 test cross families that had never been tested before. We had three check varieties. Um, the first two you see there, Ross and OMF 183, uh, came from our elite population, OMF 58, and represented two different um, cycles of selection of that elite population. We also had a variety Starlight, which had been uh, commercially released um, and had been derived from the same germplasm pool that we were evaluating. So we wanted to be sure to um, compare our new entries to Starlight to ensure that they would be uh, superior to what was already available. 